Hello YouTube, Night Hunter here, and for today's video, I just want to talk about something that I've been brewing in my mind for a long time, but I wasn't sure it was doable because CJ and warding and stuff and everything can be either as intended or broken or a glitch or a bug, but I tested it out today. Uh, I asked for people to test it for me because I don't have the team upgraded. And I didn't want to invest into that. But hell, I, I'm a content creator. I figured it's it's the best way to get things out is to test it yourself and have footage of it. So that's what I did. And I want to talk about the Dolgolder team. Uh, I know they are not free yet, but they are soon to be farmable and removed from the supply store. So I figure it's going to be one of the best way to have people invest in them even if they're not a complete team. Right now, you saw some people like Swag and other content creator uh, doing Black Beast in Chapter and Raid and having his Dolgolder team. But a lot of the problem with that was who's going to be the missing member? Who's going to be the two guy that will complete this team while waiting for the Dolgolder team? And I know some people are having trouble with Mordor and their raid. And they're like, ah, Mordor is not doing as good as I hope. Well, maybe if you mix match these two teams together, you can get a fun and impressive result from that. And I'm not speaking about Aaron Hyde. This is not a Aaron Hyde video. We know our he is and he's good and stuff. But I want to talk about Shagrat and Grimlers. Grimlers, honestly, I don't think he is a good member. But he brings just enough to consider not replacing him and using him with Shagrat. And the reason why I want to pair these two together, Shagrat and Grimlers, with the Dolgolder team, is because of the Dolgolder unique mechanic and is the binding ability. If you read here, uh, I'm just going to make a brief summary. When a Dolgogger member is hit and falls below 0 HP, he revive and get into a state of unkillable. He stay on the field as long as the Black Beast is alive. And from that, the Black Beast gains stacks and other bonus and boons and stuff. And you basically need to kill the Black Beast or the other member will never die. So... While they never die, people were like trying to put healers and other characters into the team that will increase the survivability of Black Beast. But instead, there are some chapters that don't need survivability. They need damage, they need banes, they need uh, a lot of output and damage. And while the Black Beast is quite tanky and he has counter attack, it doesn't do a lot of damage early on. He's a beast, technically, late stage of the fight or the raid stage. Or in PvP, the, the longer he gets stacks, the better he is and stronger he gets. But they are not that great early on. But Mordor is the opposite. They are really hit hard fast, but they, they kind of fall off the longer it goes. And that's why mixing them both together will result in something, uh, I think, really, really great for your team. Because that binding mechanic. I want to talk about the Bane. There's a lot of Bane applied into the Dolgolder kit. You can get Weekend from ba Basic Attack. You get Ill Block. Uh, you can get some uh, Days from Rekka and slow from Sharu and weak minded too so here is days weak minded uh, Sharu has a slow and poison so I mean the slow is on his on her summon but the poison bite so it's a lot of Bane being sent into the enemy team you can also steal it with siphoning you steal a boon so you basically has a lot of control already with Dolgolder and a lot of Banes being applied. For 
Dolgolder. There's a character named Rekka that has a passive that if she gain might, she can already get aced on the next turn. So the way the ability works is on her first turn she get deadly, on her second turn she get might, on her third turn uh, she get aced. But most of the time she will be targeted and bring down into the binding state so you won't have time to have her survive at least three turns. Most likely two turns is what you're gonna get with her. But if you have a character like Shagrat that give might to everybody, you skip one full turn so the second turn she goes in, well, she already has might, so she will gain haste. So you might get a third turn out of her with haste and might because of Shagrat ability. So there's a lot of hidden synergy that you can do with all that five member team. And now I'm just gonna go and show you Shagrat and Grimler's kit because a lot of people has not built Mordor. And they're not aware of that. But, yeah, for testing, I did bring uh, Shagrat to level 20 and gear 4. Just so I can unlock the Arc of the Eye. Shagrat has a passive that is merciless. Basically, below 10% HP, you can sacrifice a member of your team and deal 600% damage. This is as strong as Taren. King of the Under the Mountain, damage wise. And you know, King of the Diamantine is really strong, uh, but you kind of need the Overwhelm to be at 200%, so 10 stack of Overwhelm, because the King of the Diamantine does around 400%. So he's basically doing the same damage output as a Torrin basically ultimate attack. <laughs> But you don't sacrifice anybody anymore because Dol Golder with 1% HP left, it, they are unkillable in the binding stake. And you can target them for the merciless ability. The way the Mordor team is supposed to be working is Hazan giving Unbreakable so you can sacrifice a Unbreakable stack on one of your Mordor team and use Merciless so you can keep your member alive but still get the damage done. But now you don't even need Hazan, you just need the Dolgolder to have one member down and to bind his state to have a Merciless increase of 600% damage. This is level 1 of course but if you grind it up to the max, it's 600% damage. And you also grant might to everybody. This is awesome. You get a free single target nuke ability that doesn't kill your member. Grant might, so I talk about Rekka having might. Uh, you can get Might onto the Black Beast that will counter attack and do a lot of DPS that way. Might on a Siphoning will deal more damage, so sucking more HP back in. And Grimlers, just because of that. Shagrat has an ability that if Grimlers is there, you hit everybody in a AoE with Poison. But if you already has Poison, you know uh, Sharu can apply Poison. Or Bleeding. Shagrat can deal Bleeding with his basic. Grimlers can deal Bleeding with his ability. You can get two stacks of Poison instead. So really great in chapters like the Troll. Where you can apply Bleed and Poison to him. And in PvP it's just more Banes that you dish out. An AoE that is not the self-healing thing from Black Beast or is not the AoE from Rekka. So you have three AoE now with that team comp. Uh, really, really great. And for Grimlers, I'm gonna show you... Yeah, it's all theory crafting because I didn't test Grimlers out. Really, I did a uh, single player PvE thing and it worked with Shagrat, but it will work too with Grimlers. I just don't have him upgraded. But if you look as it at here, you can get 10% damage per bane. So if you land a 
healing block, a weakening, a daze, a slow, poison, bleed. You get like 6 stacks of Bane on the troll. You get 10% damage more per Bane. So you can get like his basic attack to deal 60% more damage. Even more if you can stack many, many other Banes on him. You gain counter attack, so if he gets attack, he will do his cheap shot. So there's a lot of synergy there with the Banes applying of the Dolgolder team. Savage Cut, you get bleed. You have bleed for two turns. So two stacks for two turns is really great in that regard. And you can gain advantage with crit if he's called out. So when he helps Shagrat, uh, basically you get advantage. So crit damage is nice. So even if he's not that good on itself, he does have his use in some chapter. And paired with Shagrat, he makes Shagrat really shine with his AoE attack. So that's why I wanted to share you guys my idea. And I tested it. Shagrat can sacrifice a binding of Dolgolder. I will show you the gameplay footage I have. But with me having a little bit of investment into Shagrat already, with uh, here a lot of shards here, with my Ironhide being 7 star, I did build Ozan and Rakma for my Misty Mountain squad. It's not far-fetched now with Grimlers to just bring them to 5 star. And even if I'm not using them for raid, if I ever go into Dolgolder, I'll have them ready to be paired with them. But if you guys already went into Dolgolder and you already have a big Mordor team, you can just try it out and mix-match these two together. And maybe have some decent and out of meta high raid reward. And better scoring points for at least chapter 2, maybe chapter 3. Because now you have a lot of AoE, you can get the bloodlust thing going on. Uh, chapter 1, there's one more AoE that you can bring to the table for the Dolgolder's team. Um, so yeah, if you want to tr try it, I suggest you do. And... Please inform me if it's going well for you, because on paper, it should be amazing. And from what I tested, uh, it works. So if there's uh, some Mordor team and players that are not scoring as high as they hope, maybe you can try that and increase your stuff if you already have your toes uh, into Dolgolder. So here's the gameplay and hope you have a nice time. And yeah, pretty pretty happy I found that out and tested it out for you guys to see and push it forward. Because Mordor and Dolgordor are not on my scope right now, but I, I wanted to share this idea out so people get a fresh breath of air and try new stuff that nobody was thinking about really. So there we go. Here's the gameplay. Hope you have a nice one. Ciao, bye. Oh, and... Uh, just another thing that I forgot to mention before I let you guys watch the video. Here, Shadow Squad member gain more focus. So by having more focus, you basically land better uh, poison. You land better bleed. So if you have struggled with Chagrat landing his bleed or other member of the shadow team like uh, Grimler's landing is savage strike or savage cut bleeding this is also working well in that regard and you gain 15% at the end of it so you will basically always land a big AoE poison stack with Shagrat on most of your opponents unless they have resistance glyph or something or a higher difficulty of the raid so everything together, uh, CJ wasn't wrong to say that Mordor could be a good duo to the Dolgolder team. But they should have been Chagrat and Grimlers, not Rachma. But here, that's why we are testing stuff for you guys. And now I'm going to show you the video. It's just that I, I forgot to mention it. I'm just so hyped that everything kind of worked together. 
I maybe I've skipped other synergy. Maybe you guys look into it more and you find other new combination and other new uh, thing you can and do with them. Please let me know in the comments. And that was the video. Have a nice one. Ciao, bye.